We've had about 200 college scholars we've trained. Roughly around 75 of those have graduated already. 70% have transitioned into full-time roles in financial services. So think Morgan, Stanley, Goldman Sachs, more regional firms, my prior firm, William Blair. And so that's going to be the marker of success. You know, how, how do these metrics go over time and what does the longitudinal data look like? This summer, we're going to be training about 50 new scholars. We do have aspirations to grow and scale this organization to the point where we'll be training a thousand new scholars every year. How did you get involved with the Greenwood Project? My background is that I've been a research analyst um, and investor for about 20 years, and I just geek out on business. I oftentimes go to pitch competitions, and I went to uh, a pitch competition at 1871, which is you know, our largest incubator here in Chicago, and it was a purpose-driven pitch competition. And at that pitch competition, I saw one of the co-founders. The mission just made sense to me and resonated deeply with me. There's a, a couple of reasons for that. The first is I, throughout my entire career, I've been an only in most rooms. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting experience. If I saw someone who looked like me, it was the, they were in the mail room or they were an admin. Um, but then when I moved to Chicago um, to take a opportunity in Chicago in which I was doing more global investing, um, I ran into a couple of experiences where I was the only in places that I didn't expect it. So uh, a conference in Africa, I was the only black person in the, uh, an investor trip. You know, there's just different experiences. And so when I saw an organization that focused on, you know, opening doors and creating opportunities for uh, people of color, the mission resonated deeply with me. I messaged the, uh, the co-founder and, you know, I was at William Blair at that point in time. And um, I, I tried to hand it off to the DEI folks. They were a little bit busy. And so I ended up running around a firm and coordinating a lunch and learn, which is essentially, you know, the Greenwood Project scholars, they come in, you know, we, we talk about the firm, we highlight maybe different areas, and then we give them an opportunity to engage with professionals. And it was it was really um, it was a really an enjoyable experience. I think you know um, individuals at the firms. We got a couple of different business lines represented at that lunch and learn. Individuals at the firm loved interacting with the scholars. I loved interacting with the scholars and ended up mentoring a specific scholar pretty deeply. And that kind of just kickstart the entire journey of me being involved with Greenwood Project. At what point did you join the board? The lunch and learn went really well. I started mentoring uh, one specific individual, and then um, I connected her with um, uh, a managing director that was in my network that I worked at another firm, and she had started into um, mentoring her. But within that process, we have, um, I was on the community um, service impact committee, and really it's a committee that, um, looks for nonprofits that are uh, creating impact and that we could provide catalytic funding for. And because of the experience people had with Greenwood Project, there was a really strong interest in having Greenwood Project apply into that opportunity. Greenwood Project went through the process. They ended up pitching and participating in terms of like the pitch competition. And they ended up being one of the winners for us at that point in time. They won a $200,000 grant. And this was their first meaningful corporate uh, a funder. And so we were coming in to really try and drive the impact with the organization. With that, we generally have someone join the board to make sure the money's being spent well and things are going appropriately. And given my involvement with the organization till that time and how passionate I was about it, I ended up joining the board. What changes will you bring to the Greenwood Project in your new leadership role? The mission is to introduce Blacks and Latinos to careers in financial services. And when we think about that, we still have the same mission, but the execution and how we're going about that is changing. One of the things that we were looking for is really a pathway to us becoming the premier talent pipeline for Black and Latino college students to really secure high trajectory careers in financial services and becoming the leader providing of this in Chicago and then really expanding nationwide. And really that's going to require us to, to drive excellence, to scale the programs, 
and to continually increase the impact. Since coming in, I've really been focused on um, driving excellence, professionalizing the, the leadership team, and really putting us in a position to really execute on what we need to execute on, and then really scaling and laying the foundation and addressing any tension points in the model so that we can develop you know, robust processes and procedures that can lead to consistent and repeatable results. You know, Greenwood Project and the impact that we're seeing, it's, it's tremendous, right? So we have, we've had about 200 college students participate in the program. 70% of those transition to a full-time career in financial services, which is major because when you think about the global statistics for Black and, Black and Latinos in the U.S., only 46% of people graduate, which compares to our 99, 100%. We're leaving some room for maybe there's someone who didn't graduate, but it's essentially 100% right now. And then of those that graduate, only 60% of those or 60% of those are unemployed or underemployed, right? And by the definition of underemployed is you have a job that doesn't really require a four-year degree. So for us to have individuals or 70% of our scholars transitioning into full-time careers in financial services, and then 95% of our scholars are transitioning into high trajectory careers. So those are careers that require a four-year degree and that you earn at least $60,000 a year coming out in terms of a starting salary, we think we're, we're having a substantial impact. And really, the goal here is to grow and scale the organization, de-risk the business, and position it to become an institution so that that impact is sustainable, and it's consistent, and it's repeatable, and that we're not growing for growth's sake, but we're growing because the impact is there, and it's the right thing to do. How is the program changing? Program is changing substantially. So the first thing that we're doing is that we've eliminated the high school program in order to really focus and make sure that we're providing as robust of an experience and support to the college students. Historically, we had the high school program and the thinking there was, you know, we need to get scholars interested in these majors. Um, so that when they're interested in the majors, now they're better positioned to take on these careers. And um, on the surface, that that appears to be reasonable. So when you look at STEM majors, Blacks, uh, Whites, and Latinos declare them at roughly the same rate, 18, 19, and 20%. So we're getting enough shots on goals for the majors. The difference really here, here is the persistence. 55% of Whites persist in STEM-related majors. 80% of Black and Latinos do not persist in STEM-related majors. So the, the issue isn't getting people interested in the majors that position them for success transitioning into financial services. It's really the supporting them throughout that journey in college. And so what eliminating the high school program does, it allows us to provide a much more robust college experience. So that's the first big thing that we're doing. The second is that we're, we're extending the learning journey. So historically, and by historically, I'm going to say the last two to three years, you know, Greenwood Project was founded in 2016, but prior to William Blair providing the first grant in January of 2020, right before the pandemic started, there really wasn't substantial funding there. And so the program's really two to three years old um, when you think about the scale and size, but what it had evolved into was a 10 week experience over the summer uh, the first four weeks consisting of a uh, intensive boot camp, and then that followed by six weeks um, of an internship with a corporate partner. And really, that when you think about educational best practices, when you think about um, you know the ability for scholars to move from exposure to information to really commanding it and being able to apply it, you need more time with them. So the first thing we're doing um, is we're lengthening the, the learning journey. And so instead of it just being four weeks over the summer, we're going to have a learning journey that consists of 12 to 24 months prior to a scholar showing up for any experience over the summer. Um, that's going to allow us to really spend time with the scholars to help them understand what they're passionate about and then to connect that passion to a specific career track and then provide training that's relevant to that career track. 
So we're really excited about that. That's also going to unlock the ability for scholars to participate in a full 10 to 12 week internship in their junior year. You know, historically Greenwood Project, if a firm came to engage with us, we would tell them, hey, we might be giving you a freshman, a sophomore or a junior. They might be someone who's gone through the training or someone who hasn't gone through the training. It was just very confusing how to engage with Greenwood Project. The longer learning journey when we meet people in their freshman year, really support them through that entire period to prepare them for a junior year internship allows us to be better, more targeted, more focused, provide a much more robust educational journey, and then um, to align with traditional recruiting and placement timelines. So I think this is going to give our corporate partners more agency. It's going to give our scholars more agency and really lead to better results. When do these changes take place? This summer will be the last summer that we're doing a four-week intensive followed by a six-week internship. In next year, it will be a two-week intensive over the summer, then followed by an eight-week internship, but a lot more training happening prior to the summer. And then in 2026 will be the first year where we have a cohort of scholars come in um, that we've trained them for 18 to 12 months, and then they're, they have the ability to participate in a full 10 to 12 week internship over the summer. So we're in the process of that and, and making sure that that happens. What I will tell you is as we've built the team and, and really set people up for success, I'm, I'm, I'll highlight two other things um, that we've done. We're implementing career tracks and then we're also building out a coaching line that consists of uh, individuals with financial services DNA that have actually done the roles, know how to show up, um, and are helping the scholars. But this year, prior to the four-week intensive, uh, scholars are going through anywhere from 10 to 40 hours of training prior to interviewing with a corporate partner. And that training consists of resume review, interview training, um, understanding the financial services lens landscape, and defining a career track that's relevant to them and that they have some passion about and want to explore that, right? And that that's also being um, overseen by both of our our director of talent and recruitment, as well as our program and education team and, and the coaching. So scholars are joining the program, getting coached and having meaningful engagements prior to anything happening over the summer. And that didn't happen last year. And so that in and of itself is a, is a progression into how we were operating um, last year. And then we'll just continue to build, build, on, build on that as we proceed in time. How can companies get involved? in a variety of different ways. And I, I, I'll give you, I guess, three high level ways that companies can, can get involved. Um, the first is a donation, right? There are some organizations where, you know, we just cannot meet one a business need. So for example, um, we have um, some firms that have come to us and they only hire MBAs that have done two to three years of banking. And so they're authentically not set up to take undergraduates or transition them to full-time careers. And so they just donate um, to support the work we're doing. We have other organizations who are in a similar position, but then they focus on donation and engagement. So we have another firm that they generally are looking for, PhDs with computational mathematic backgrounds. Once again, individuals that have more substantial experience um, and they've set up either mini internship programs um, or they've set up programs where we have an education team. And so they're going to engage with our scholars and support our scholars on top of the engage the donation. The, the second way is really engagement in that we have a lot of scholars who are looking to engage with professionals. And so we have a lot of volunteer opportunities over the summer uh, this year. Um, we've actually started to build out the, the volunteer calendar to be more all, all year round. So this spring, we had a lot more volunteer opportunities. We have a couple of exciting ones coming up. We're going to be doing our first mock trading challenge in coordination with CME. Uh, we're going to be doing a FinTech Fest and tour in coordination with World Business Chicago. But we have a lot more um, engagement opportunities throughout the entire year that consists from anything from virtual panels, uh, firm visits, mentoring, one-on-one uh, -on -one interview training. And so there's a, just a lot of opportunities for firms to engage. The other areas that firms have been really excited about is we are building out career tracks. And so, you know, historically, when we think about the training over the summer, 
you know, the capstone project for the scholars was a group stock pitch competition. And so that was that was a good starting point, but it was a missed opportunity in the fact that not everyone wants to pitch stocks or be an investor. And so a lot of firms are excited about engaging with us as we're implementing career tracks. Um, the career tracks are going to cover a variety of areas in the industry. There's sales and relationship management, there's investment roles, there's operations and compliance, and then traditional corporate roles. And so that's giving firms an, an opportunity to engage in the areas that's most authentic to them with a group of scholars who want to go down that career track. And so a lot of firms were connecting with their education departments and really leveraging, you know, things that they already have built out knowledge around. And then the third way people can engage is really donations and internships. And really that's offering internships to our scholars and really, you know, coming to us and providing individuals the opportunity. You know, there is no lack of talent. There's only a lack of opportunity. And so, you know, providing our scholars these opportunities is meaningful. So just to recap, there's donation, there's engagement, and then there's a combination of donation and internship. Where are these scholars located and where do they end up working? Roughly 75, 80% of our scholars are from the Chicago area. Uh, roughly around 80% of our internships are in the Chicago area. And so we have a very strong presence in Chicago, but we have people applying in from all over the country. And then we've had firms interested in engaging with us from all over the country. Uh, we have an ethos where we don't want anyone to miss out on an opportunity due to lack of financial resources. And that is a very, that is a system, systemic barrier for a lot of people to participate in these internships, particularly when you start thinking about internships outside of Chicago. Um, we cover travel and housing for people. Uh, if, if the scholars need it, we buy them professional clothing. Um, you know, um, just because you're Black and Latino doesn't mean you lack financial resources, but when you look at the wealth distribution in this country, you know, Blacks have 13 cents on the dollar for every uh, dollar of wealth a white uh, family has, and then Latinos is 22 or 23 cents on the dollar. So when you look at that, um, there is correlation there, and so we try to step in. So, you know, a gating, a big gating factor for us, for people, for more of a national expansion has just been fundraising to kind of support those wraparound services, the travel and the housing, um, health care, clothing, anything that's needed. So transitioning to the new model of programming where a lot of the training is more virtual, we're still going to have in-person touch points, um, that's going to unlock our ability to service a broader population and to focus on making sure that um, you know we can meet needs everywhere and that the travel and housing is not as much of an impediment. How has work with the FIA been going? FIA has been great. We were at um, the conference in Chicago with a booth um, late last year. We'll be there again this year in November. Um, they support us through their golf event, but FIA has been really great. I think the way we're seeing success with industry um, organizations and FIA this year is really being a lot more intentional around our engagement. I think historically, you know, when Greenwood Project was interacting with a lot of organizations, it was in a lot more of a ad hoc manner and not as structured, right? So we were, um, as we're, you know, um, re-engaging with organizations, you know, we, we are putting in place a lot more structure around our engagement, identifying, you know, goals over the next year. Here's how we should think about this in terms of being successful. So FIA is part of Futures Fundamentals, um, CME is, it has that as well, but they also have their own training division and um, and materials. And so we're going to, you know, um, use them as a resource and really work with them in terms of identifying opportunities for them to engage with the scholars, um, as well as other opportunities for us to engage with their member organizations, right? So really being structured around that. And then um, the third way is also making sure that, you know, their members and coordinating this, you know, their members are aware of what's going on at Greenwood Project um, and really providing and supporting us in terms of, you know, generating that visibility that's so needed in terms of the work we're doing. How can people contact you if they want to help? You can go to greenwoodproject.org or you can reach out to partnerships at greenwoodproject.org or info at greenwoodproject.org, and people will get back to you. You could also send an email to me. It's my first name, Kwesi, 
at greenwoodproject.org and I will make sure that, um, you know, we coordinate things on our end. You know, we do have a very active LinkedIn page. We would appreciate it if you join and follow us on LinkedIn. Um, that will keep you up to date. And then you could also go on our website and join the mailing list. Um, and that will keep you up to date as well. Mm-hmm.